Scalpero's web series and podcast is filmed and recorded in their ship, the Centurion Vulture, and may contain language not suitable for all. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to Scoundrels, y'all. We are broadcasting. We are back in the Century and Vulture. I am CG. I am Paul Bannister. Curtis Wayne Millard standing by. We are three grown-ass men here to discuss Star Wars as always. And in fact, I believe this week we're going to make up for last week and we're going to cover two episodes in one. Captain Curtis Wayne did give us a nice rewind for last week. Yeah. So, Curtis, why don't you give us a rewind for this week only? And then we'll test, uh, discuss both episodes. Scout rules rewind. Here we go. Mandalorian, season three, episode eight. This is season finale, and it's called The Return. We pick up right where we left off. Bo-Katan and crew scramble to escape. Mando starts a desperate fight with his jetpack captors. Baby Yoda shows up in his IG-12 suit and busts some ass to complete the escape. The bad guys scramble TIE Fighter. Moff Gideon gets pissed and throws his helmet on. <laughs> Mando, yeah, yeah. Mando hits up R5 and has him tapped into the base and sends a map. Using Phantom Menace style shield tactic, Mando defeats the jetpack troops two by two. Mando finds where they keep the clones and he destroys them. Meanwhile, TIE Fighters attack. All the Mandalorians assemble in an underground garden. It's very beautiful. And then get involved in the fight. Uh, yeah. Bo-Katan charges the way with the Darksaber. A massive jetpack battle ensues. On the surface, Moff Gideon and Mando battle it out, showing off all their cool tricks and weapons and flamethrowers and stuff. The red troops show up again and begin to shock Mando, and Baby Yoda's like, no. No. <laughs> Baby Yoda gets <laughs> locked into a room with these red armored dickweeds. Bo-Katan decides she wants to fight Moff Gideon now, freeing up Mando to tag team the red troopers with Baby Yoda. Moff Gideon destroys the Darksaber and seemingly gets the best of Bo-Katan until Baby Yoda shows up with Mando and they triple team his ass. Meanwhile, homeboy Kamikaze style dive bombs the fuck out of the place. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and his poor man's Star Destroyer effectively blowing the fuck out of Moff Gideon. But Baby Yoda shields them using the force to royalty-free music. The Mandalorians <laughs> celebrate by having a Russian-style bath baptism. Mando officially files the paperwork to adopt Baby Yoda, which is very cute. But deep below, a mythosaur is awakened, and the Mandalore fires are reignited. Mando and Baby Yoda take off the book's freelance gig with the New Republic. IG-11 finally gets resurrected. Action Jackson is elated. And Mando and Baby Yoda <laughs> relax on the countryside, uh, fade to black and scene, and I guess we're done with this bullshit, guys. Yeah, yeah, Holy we shit. are. We, we got out of it. I don't know if I would say alive. No, uh, I, I mean, like I, I feel like I lost a few psychological limbs watching this season of Mandalorian. To be honest, <laughs> yeah, the you world's know what a little grayer. Me off the most yeah. was uh, all week. I've been seeing posts about you know, these fans aren't going to be able to handle this finale because it's so emotional and, like, things are ha going to happen in this uh, mm. finale. Like, I, I might have been really? Filoni, of course, and just, like, I don't know if you're going to be able to handle it because it's going to be the, some big things are happening. So I was a little excited about, okay, maybe, maybe are they going to kill off somebody? Are they going to kill Dinner? Are they going to kill Grogu? Throw his ass off something? Uh, and then just to have that, I mean, the... The, the the moments were cool. I mean, it was like the moments with Din and, and Grogu, which we all love, were awesome. It was finally nice to see Din Djarin kick yeah. some ass. Yeah, right. But other than that, show, I was ex I was expecting something huge to happen. There was no uh, end credit like scene. There oh, was, yeah. Like, no, no, you're right. No, I was waiting. There's Same. no fin that, that did not feel like a finale, and they didn't they didn't clean anything up. I know we're going to go over both episodes, but just all in all, like... What the hell's going on here? No payoff. Nope. Nothing has impact. It's the same bitch fest from the last time we talked about it where they think that they can just throw a bunch of action sequences together and yeah. because it involves a TIE fighter or 
a dark saber or jetpacks or Mandalorians that that's enough to get us all excited. Nothing carries impact. I think for me, after the last time we talked, it's clear to me now that the yeah, Mandalorian- Yeah, what was the fucking goal? It was, it, th this show is just elevated prequels now, to the degree, and I'm glad you mentioned it in your rewind, Curtis, that they're literally lifting scenes from the prequels in these moments. Like, I'm sure yeah. in their mind it's an homage, but considering how half-baked this whole season is, the right. fact that they couldn't cook up anything more interesting or unique than a Phantom Menace rehash for suspense, like, what the fuck are we doing here? It's just... Yeah, homages <sighs> only work if you're, like, into it. Um, 100%. Yeah, it's... A it's actually not a horrible finale, but the road to get here, it's, it's kind of right. like a dry, it's a bit of a dry hump. You know what I mean? It's not amazing, yeah. but it's not horrible. But the road to get here was pretty fucking dog balls. I yeah. agree with you. The events of the finale aren't my problem. Like what happened yeah. with the characters. I don't have a, necessarily a problem with the choices of where all the characters ended up. It's like yeah. Curtis said, there, there's no development that was meaningful. So when it happens... There's just no weight. It doesn't feel satisfying. You don't feel mm -hmm. like a big emotional relief or emotional tension or you're wor you're not worried. You kind of just know, honestly, that they're going to get out of it. And and the one thing that keeps happening now in this episode and the last is the really lazy writing thing where instead of finding a way to make the events be clear what's happening through action, they do that mm -hmm. thing where a character is talking to another character in a really blatant way because they're really just talking to us. Like um, yeah. when they sent the guy up to do this, this, the self-destruct and she gives the other Mando instructions, it's like, so what you're going to do is you're going to fly up here and then you're going to take the ship and you're going to do it down because they don't trust that, they, that we can figure out the why and how and they can't trust it because they haven't done enough to have yeah. it make sense. It's like they just they, threw uh, together action, and then in order to make sense of what's going to happen and why, they throw in three really stiff dialogue lines to explain what's about to happen instead of it actually having any sort of ebb and flow and tension and release. It's just B-level storytelling. It just It's pretty is. B. It feels like got, Filoni's got his hands all over it because it's yeah. cartoonish. Well, did you see I his mean, ass in there at that bar? Yeah, he yeah, was there yeah, at the his bar. stupid cowboy hat. I mean, well, I love the guy, I, I but feel it's horrible like, it's to kindergarten admit this, bullshit. But I, I didn't want to. I was like, I hate. I was. I feel horrible to admit this, but it pissed me off when I saw him. Yeah, same. You it did too. It's like get your I was like, go home. Face. It's like it's one thing to have your, you know, you know, facing away. And I know he was a pilot in one of those uh, episodes, yeah. Mando seeds, but still, it's like it was just a reminder of like how you've taken this cool character and this cool story and turned it into like the Clone Wars cartoon. That's right. Yeah. It's just it's. I mean, I even do like have the, the same feeling. Yeah, yeah. It's about like, when I'm watching the Clone Wars when I watch this, which yeah. is not good. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, it's not it a good feeling. It happened in this season. It's a, it's a season three yeah. problem. That's the yeah. Issue. It's a season three fucking problem. They did sort of leave it where they can maybe course correct, but I hate it when like these little thorns yeah. are in my side. Yeah, it's like agreed. Jar Jar, like Jar Jar Binks exists. Like, yeah. if I have to, if I'm gonna be honest with myself, it's like I have to sit and think about these fucking things. Yeah, yeah, you're right. They did the ending did feel like now they have a chance. Okay, he's got his contract. He's gonna be just policing the Adirondack. <laughs> off the books, and contract. Yeah, off the back. It's like okay, now he's got a little house, and that's all well and good. But it's like they just cannibalized an entire season of The Mandalorian just to set up a bunch of other series and movies. And now that it's all done, we'll get yeah. back to Mando and Grogu having adventures together. It's like motherfuckers. That's the whole goddamn show. What's up, scoundrels? Uh, my name is Matt Mandracina, and I am transmitting from Charleston, South Carolina. Today, I'm weighing in on Mandalorian Season 3. Uh, I am going to start by saying that I like where we ended up at the end of the season. I'm just not completely satisfied with how we got there. Uh, the writing was choppy. There's a lot of unnecessary filler. Um, parts of it felt really dumbed down and disappointing. Um, there are two episodes in particular that are on my shit list for this season. Um, one was, I think it was the third episode, which I've just been calling Astro Pop Dead Doctor episode. Um, it was just a waste of time. Um, there are smarter ways to put in an evil beneath the surface subplot 
than how they did it. I mean, to do a whole episode about it instead of sprinkling that in throughout the season was just a terrible idea. And it takes you out of the whole Mando feel. Um, the second episode that I really hated was the Jack Black Lizzo episode. I just found it unnecessary above all. And I'm calling it uh, a Man the Mando CSI episode because it felt like all of a sudden the two of them, Bo-Katan and Mando, are cops in this city. And they even have a droid autopsy. And I really have expected uh, there to be a science lab montage with techno music in the background. Um, it just felt, like I said, I keep saying it, it felt wasted. Um, there are three awesome episodes in Book of Boba Fett, where maybe not the whole episodes, but had Mando and Grogu in it, that I felt would have fit way better in season three. I mean, he's tra Grogu training with Luke and trying to decide whether or not to stay with Luke or continue being with Mando, I felt was the whole kind of overarching story of this season was finding your place, knowing where you belong, um, you know, and fighting for what you believe in and your family and, your, and to have a home and a place to live uh, or belong anywhere. And I really think they missed that opportunity and just kind of, um, made episodes just to fill in time instead of being smart about the whole story. Um, I also wasn't a huge fan of IG-11 Grogu mech suit. I found that kind of ridiculous and just silly and I couldn't get past it. I tried to. There, I guess there are adorable things about it, and, but at the end of the day, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't get past it. But either way, um, like I said, I like how we ended up not my favorite season. I would say the, my least favorite Amanda seasons for sure. Um, but you guys keep doing your show. I love you, what y'all do. And uh, may the force be with you. And um, fucking join us or die. Are they doing another yeah. Mando season four? Or is it going to be Filoni's really movie? Because I know Filoni's coming out of the movie. I thought... Uh, I thought Favreau said he was working on season four, and maybe it will go back. I did get the sense Thought at so the too. end of this that he was yeah. going to go back to, hey, hire me because I'm a bounty hunter. It's like, well, it's about time. I feel like this season was just a throwaway. Like, it was just yeah, like nothing. It was. It's like, we had to get a season out. We had to get, you know, a Mando season out uh, because that's our contract. And it was just like nothing. It, like, they brought so many things in. And it was slow and uninspired. The Moth Gideon storyline was so lame. So, it's so All lame. this time were, spent built on this, yeah, clones. His, and his then helmet for was a, so have a self destruct button on his clones, and him to be like, "You destroyed my babies that were going to be Jedi uh, clones." It's also kind of weird that like, they killed them. It's like, what are you talking? Where did this come from? Like, it was so no stupid. Impact. No because impact. they didn't develop the story. No impact. No. You're right. Yeah, they I didn't mean, develop they, anything. They, they wasted they their time with like Jack Moth? Black. Why'd you put a self-destruct you know, button on your clones then? <laughs> like, it's so <laughs> shitty. It's so B-level storytelling. I mean, they've been implying since the first season that Grogu is like his genetics and they did this, that, and the other. Like, if they had been working this up with a tension build for three seasons, again, yeah. it's like the same thing. The nature of what happened, the events and the circumstances is not the problem. It's the complete failing of the execution. Yeah. You know, it's like they built up... It was supposed to be this big tension and they've got, you know, the, the bad... at the like you know, uh, undercover mm -hmm. empire chick that we've seen. All this stuff building oh, up. Yeah, and then they, it's we could have done what? with that. We could have totally yeah. done without. I mean, I know what they're doing. They're setting up all their other BS to at That's our really expense. It. That's right. That's really it, right? They just fucked over a season of Mandalorian because they decided they want to make these movies and shows and we uh -huh. have to lay groundwork for them and we're just going to like steal the Mandalorian and use it as a vehicle to launch more movies and series yeah which know? is bad news and it's, it's like terrible. i had all these ideas of like maybe because you know the last season uh, i mean episode seven the spies i was like maybe you know it would have been cool if there was a spy if the smelter girl was uh dude you know, spies spy. are cool and i thought maybe right. she spies was gonna be Andor. part of death watch i thought i was like shit she has horns on her helmet that was maul's crew i thought maybe she was gonna backstab and is she still and, wasn't there a mole? Oh that yeah, I, I that thought that she episode? might have been a mole, but a celebrity mole, but she's not. But, but she yeah. may be. I don't know. But, well, yeah, but the me. thing is, well, there's no closure. Well, they open so many doors, and yeah, yeah. what were we gonna say, Paul? Sorry. Well, remind me what was the moment that made that implied that she might be 
a double agent when they uh episode. when they arrived on mandalore and they met those other i think mandalore mandalorians that were living there that somehow had no idea that moth gideon had an entire base cool yeah uh, which apparently also appeared to be five minutes away right up the road oh, yeah his like, base was they on took it's like we'll take you oh. right to it it's like where did this come from where did all these There's goddamn like tie interceptors, fleet of tie interceptors yeah. and clone research yeah. labs Jesus. and the yeah. home of moff gideon and yet like mando's cruising around in the lakes of you know the waters of lake minnetonka and yeah. no one like oh by the way right over there is yeah. a giant imperial base no one saw like an ins- interceptor or a ship or, or yeah no one nothing. seen like a tie fighter these bad or boys coming in but oh, they so said, they mentioned lazy. something about the Death Watch, and she said, oh, they're all dead. And that's when I was like, ooh, I think maybe you're Death Watch. Yeah. And that would have been cool to bring in, like, horned bandos. But then Moth yeah. Gideon was just so lame. How I cheesy like was he his was, helmet? I, he, he was, was lame. just cheesy. He was cheesy. He was cheesy, like, too. Fucking cheesy. He was Cornball. great, the episode one, or uh, yeah, season correct. one, though. He's, first two seasons, he was fantastic. He's obviously a tremendous actor. Um, correct. With... Um, didn't y'all think the design was cheesy as helmet? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> also, also, what about I'm those little... jetpack troopers or cheese dick? Tro- they're like, yeah, they're like me at home, like drawing, like, oh, this should be cool if he had horns. Dude, yeah. Filoni. Oh. This reeks of Filoni baloney, it's, man. Yeah, it's got Filoni all over it. Also, the inconsistencies in Ralph McCoy. So all these dudes, all these dudes had suits made from Beskar, but somehow they're able to like still like they like. Mando's suit blocks blaster shots, but apparently theirs don't. Yeah, Even they kind of did. Well, they, they did at some weaker. point. They did sometimes. Yeah. sometimes. And what makes Moff Gideon super strong now with this like amazing dark saber? But all it took was like Dude, one it, crunch, it, and it then it felt it's like destroyed. he had like bi- uh, Biff like hydraulic suit going on. Like I you, know. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what are yeah, was his suit? Yeah. It was like Biff those suit dark from, troopers uh, back in season two were pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean look, I love... there's moments of the action that you wanted to like. I kept saying to myself, "Man, if they had earned this, this mm-hmm. moment would be cool." Like when all the mandos and the sh- and the troopers were like meeting in midair, and there were these and the tie interceptors coming up through the clouds while the other th- you know things went yeah. down. Like some of those shots were kind of cool from an action direction standpoint, but again, no lead up to make it have impact. So it's just a brief moment of like, cool. Ah, uh, fuck doesn't mean anything yeah doesn't i wonder last. if they i wonder if they flipped a bunch of stuff around like um in the middle of the season because like i know paul you were we were talking about this how like maybe the effects at each episode sort of got like a little little less um i don't know what the word believable because at the beginning yeah. of the season uh, the beginning of the season it, it, everything felt pretty good yep, uh, yeah especially the cg ships and stuff and then towards the end it started to kind of like feel a little cheaper yep agreed yeah, looks cheaper. I'm not even sure how, su- but but a little. You know what I mean? You remember how when we talked about Obi Wan and we would yeah. talk about how certain scenes seemed like they were like on a small sound stage, like and claustrophobic. Like, that happened in this to me in the last it couple did. episodes. It did. Yeah, it did. Last two. Like or three, Mandalore uh, doesn't seem like an epic location. W- having watched the whole season and the multiple times that go to Mandalore, it feels like the planet is the size of like three or four football fields. Yeah. Right, yeah, and it's supposed to be this like I don't know. It just I would have just I I was hyped for this finale, and I thought something big and emotional was gonna happen, and I was just like, and then well, at I was least ri- they didn't. I have couldn't Luke believe when again. it ended. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like when it when the I was ep- waiting for. I was like, ended, oh, they're gonna like, huh? I was gonna watch it twice. I got halfway through my second viewing, and I just turned it off because I was yeah. like, this is pointless. It's I mean, and there was the rule. Yeah. yeah, Din Djarin moments were great when he's with Grogu, and they had some nice connect. Like, man, that's, sure. if it was Red Grogu and Din Djarin this season, it could have been great. But they didn't yep. do that, and they opened up all these doors because, like you said, Paul, they're trying to get more shows, more movies. They're coming Marvel. out with like it's just Marvel. And it's just come on, give me a break. Yeah. Marvel. If they yeah, had like a small like a... little little Indiana Jones style adventure with him and Grogu, where they had to like yeah. who knows like. That's right. I don't know. Temple of Doom or, um, you know, go yeah, after yeah. some sort of relic or something. Go back and, to you know, the basics. Like, not so such high stakes because they just did that. Like Luke Skywalker yeah. just saved y'all's ass. And like, man, like, I don't know. It felt like the, the it was intentionally slow for lack of a decent story, too. Yeah. When like, I went through like the... It was just yeah. Not a lot happened, heels. but it was a longer yeah. episode. You know what I mean? They opened a lot of doors, but they just left them open with zero, like... Yeah. 
So totally. many. I, I, I'm trying to think back on this season and just be like, what the hell did I just watch? What was right. the point? What was the main point of this story? Remember, there's a was fucking bird going? episode where the like the birds, like the fucking the raptor birds. Remember that? Oh yeah. Oh I yeah. Think they CG, ate those you, birds. Yeah, you sent that through. <laughs> Is that accurate? I mean, it does. I just look saw like someone that. post that. It was just. Uh, it was like, here's the raptors, and then they had a big feast. I was like, I thought you guys were gonna. Train these bad like, What is that about? I don't know. Popsicle episode? What the hell is like, going what the fuck on? were we doing out there? This whole season was a, just, a, it, was, it felt like it was just a throwaway. It's like, okay, let's get this out and then we can work on these other things. It seems yeah. like they just needed to position this planet mm -hmm. of Mandalore to have been retaken by the Mandalorians. Moff Gideon is now gone because what? They got to make way for Thrawn now, right? Thrawn is clearly going to be the new big bad guy. So yeah, it's like, we got to hurry like up and it. kill off, we got to kill off Gideon. Because we, they just needed some sort of big bad guy for this one season. We'll kill him off. Now right. we'll make way for Thrawn. And the Mandalorians yep. are in Mandalore. And this is clearly going to become relevant. Because I think, if I'm not mistaken, the movie that Filoni is going to make is not... It's like a, an Avenger style where a lot of the yep. storylines are going to intersect. Isn't that oh, what they're saying? It's going yeah. to bring it's gonna, to It's going to connect all of these... Like Ahsoka, the, the bad Mandalorian. Bash, Ahsoka, Mandalorian. Yeah, it's going to connect them all together. And, I have. Uh, little... Do we know Moth Gideon died? Because you know, it's I mean, Star you're Wars. right. Who knows? How many more times are they going to pull this shit? We're like, well, we didn't see yeah, him. I'm die. sick of him. I'm sick of these him. These cheap they, bastards. He was, oh yeah, I remember a... that one. God, I just I keep getting these flashbacks of things that's happened this season. They're so random, like that, like yeah. the derelict shuttle. It's like what? I, yeah. Oh I mean, right, I love the that... birds. Yeah. Right. The fucking it's dead storm? ends. There was nothing. I could care less about this. I felt like it was an emotionless. And like bits of fun entertaining, but it was just like nothing great. It There's a version I, of the story of the retaking of the of the planet Mandalore by the Mandalorian culture in the hands of a great scriptwriter and right. given a two, two and a half hour movie to tell that story, it could yeah. be really good. But yeah. this this new strategy of B level Marvel storytelling in the Star Wars universe. I gotta be honest, it really bums me out because oh, it feels super depressing. It's hard yeah. to be excited about Ahsoka. It's hard to be excited about Skeleton Crew. You know, Andor is safe because it's got nothing to do with Favreau and yep. Filoni. You know, Gil it's already written. Kill it. It's two seasons. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, I actually really liked them. Ahsoka in that one episode of Mandalorian last Mando. year, where yeah. she Same. was like, "I was like, man, these guys are actually handling these like." I know. Dumbass characters. Agreed. Uh, pretty well. But we'll see what happens. now, you, I'm yeah. with you, Curtis. When we watched her appear, I was like, well, this is pretty fucking cool. And now, like, yeah, after, Jedi. The, after season three of Mandalorian, it's like, this is going to be some prequel cartoon dog shit. I look, yeah. I'm sure I'll tune in and I hope I'm wrong. Well, For all yeah. my bitching, to be clear, I really, really, really want to be wrong. I want all of I'm, these series to be great. I want it to be yeah. satisfying, and I want there to be rich story development and characters you care about. But right yeah. now, it's hollow. There's, It's all flash and no substance, and I don't know how these otherwise talented people can't see that what they're making is just like cotton candy as opposed yeah. to yeah. a fucking chocolate cake like give us it's, give us it's the marvel. real thing i'm blaming yeah, marvel is. for this because every i just also it's like marvel's gonna be more careful when they pick their directors it's like who cares you now, guys like, come out with a thousand yeah. movies a year right. that mean nothing that have no stakes and you're doing right. this to star wars now you're now just because it's such a successful universe and they see that and all disney cares about is making money it's like well That's see right. how marvel's doing it we have gardens of the galaxy we have hulk over here we got this and then we can bring them all together is it and marvel it kind of taking like a little bit of a dive like as yeah, far because as like who cares anymore it's like right. they did the they did the end game or the final movie and then there's like guess what now we're gonna open up a portal which opens up different things in time and then yeah. we can go back and they're not actually dead and it's just like shut up like um, yeah, and if this already. was their idea of thinking you guys aren't gonna be able to handle the season finale of uh mandalorian because it's gonna be too emotional <laughs> it's like are you fucking stupid like I, I'm, I'm pissed off the only off. thing that was like kind of cool like, for me was when mando like I joked about it, but he actually adopted. Uh, I'm like, that was cool to me. <laughs> it was, it was cool, well, yeah. but I feel like it was cheap. Like that moment yeah, yeah. should have been. It should have been a big emotional payoff moment because now they're officially family. But it yeah. was just this, like, again, the same thing with the dark saber when he gave it to Bo Katan earlier. 
like mm-hmm. in in a brief moment all of a sudden there's some sort of like quick technicality like gold helmet's like no you can't you're not family's like okay i adopt him oh, oh yeah okay oh, right. oh, he's fine. Yes, that's like, the way <laughs> you're right like there's it's like what are we like, it's that easy you could just say okay well she he's my kid now cool yeah oh cool. yeah that was okay. only that's yeah that was like the same thing that happened with the dark saber like, oh yeah by the yeah. way you did actually save me now they and after all that yeah. fucking idiots man it's, with it's all the like dark saber stuff rangers, now it's broken <laughs> it's we talked about broken. power rangers before but this the sad bad, thing yeah. is it's not that much more elevated from a storytelling standpoint than the it shit really they isn't. do on a show like power rangers yeah the I, way the I'll, way there's no like you don't earn anything you can just say that i'm this it's you know like when you watch little kids play and they're like Okay, I'm this person, and I have this, and you're like, no, yeah. oh, but I have this. That's but what I've it got feels supersonic like power do- deluxe. It's like yeah. when someone needs it, they can just suddenly decide that they can do a thing now when it's convenient, literally in a moment with no and they don't explanation. Have to earn it. All I heard yeah. in my head was Power Rangers, Power Rangers, when Moth Gideon was given his hold. You destroyed my Jedi sensitive <sighs> or Force sensitive Dark Troopers. Because I had a uh, self-destruct button built into the machine that would just destroy them all for some reason. It's like I, I wish I had that never watched it. I uh, wish I had never watched it. I'm Curtis. I'm like you. It's like it's hard to turn off. Like I don't ever yeah. watch the prequels, but knowing that Jar Jar is in them is yeah. always in my brain. And the things that w- like Jar Jar exists now. in the same world as like Darth Vader from Empire Strikes Back. It doesn't mix. Uh, no. no. The um, one that's like know. watching Grogu, like <laughs> watching Mando kick ass was awesome. And the moment he had with Grogu, it's like, listen, bud, we gotta, you gotta stay with. And that was like a nice, but that was like, the, where's, and him and Red, I was like, that could have been so cool. They could have done these yep. types of things all season. R5 is cool. Now, but it does what, suck like, seeing them fly, though. It reminds me of fucking Attack of the Clones. Yeah. It does. It's like, again, it's the same thing we've said so many times. It undermines the original trilogy. If the idea yeah. is that. R2 and, yeah. R- and all these R2 astromechs can, fly can now. just... Like, dude, yeah. really? Like, uh, yeah. we could have used that, that on Death Star. Yeah. <laughs> right. L- shall we go through the ways in which the original trilogy would have been different if R2 could just cruise around and fly all the time? Yeah. yeah. I, I think, think like, like, he could have helped out on Jabba's barge. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That's the difference between this and Marvel is that Marvel is kind of an empty slate. Star Wars is right. the original yeah. trilogy. You have this But Marvel stone. does this, though, man. I remember yeah, watching I right, one of them CG. there, and then like there was a throwaway line where someone was like, "We invented time travel." Like literally, that was how yeah. they introduced time travel. Is someone right. showed up into a room and said, "I figured out time travel." And it's yeah, like yeah. Okay. Iron Man. Guess it's what? Tony y'all. Stark. Oh. Check it out. But it was just no, you're right. Iron yeah, Man. That's was how cool, they're though. doing it. I think your you're point is important, with this OG. though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. CG, your it, point is it's really sacred. important. I think that's it. Yeah, Marvel has never done that before. Never like yeah. this, the the yeah. original trilogy is sacred, and I know the prequels. People love it, and it's sacred to them. So I have to give them some credit that it might. But maybe they love this. I don't know. But I don't think I've met anybody right now that is enjoying this season of the Mandalorian. Other than kids it. on Reddit, I don't know. Like, how are the? Does yeah. anyone know how the numbers or like how it's shaping yeah. up? Like, is, I haven't. If, seen... if people don't like it, maybe that is our only saving grace. Like, if people yeah. aren't watching it, or people are responding, like, I don't yeah. know what the Rotten to- I can check, uh, I could get on the Vulture and check out this Rotten Vulture. Tomatoes. I'm situation. lost in the woods now at this point on who is and who, like, who's good and who's not in the in the decision-making team of the Star Wars franchise. Yeah, now, for a long time, I thought, I thought Kathleen Kennedy was maybe not helping, and Favreau was going to be the guy uh-huh. that was going to save it, and now I kind of more thinking the opposite. Yeah. Because it feels like Favreau and Filoni are doing the Marvel approach, and maybe Kathleen Kennedy's over here like, you know, why don't we tell some quality stories and get some talented people in the mix? And they're just like, nope, we've got our crew of like six bullshit directors like Bryce Dallas Howard, and we're just going to keep knocking this dog shit out, and we're going to make elevated prequel cartoons. Yeah, And that's what Star Wars is I mean, Wars he's taking stuff, I mean, that moment, uh, the whole flame thing with Grogu holding the flames, that was straight out of Rebels. That's how yeah. uh, oh, what's it? His, one of the Jedis does that, where he's holding a ball of fire. So, mm. I mean, it's, I was just like, this is, Filoni's got his baloney hands all over also, this. Also, at what point does Grogu start to talk? Yeah. Like, how can yeah. he do all these things, but, like, basic speech isn't a thing? Yeah, I mean, it's like, like they might be inching towards old. that. Yeah. yeah so the tomato score is 87, which is surprisingly. But the audience score is 49. So, like, okay. I guess critics somehow dug it, but I don't trust this tomato meter anymore, honestly, because, like, everything's so politicized yeah. and weird, and there's bots Dude, and they shit. Dude, gave, 
I don't trust Rotten Tomatoes because they give like Uncle Buck like a 65. I'm like, are you kidding me? What? Uncle Buck? You gotta lost your fucking mind. You've lost yeah, your damn no mind. Shit. That's all. <laughs> that movie Dude, doesn't Uncle have Buck's a bad Uncle Buck's a masterpiece. Scene. Oh, it's perfect. Every yeah. every scene is the best. Like it's like it's one of those scenes you'd show somebody. It's like it's just play by play of the best. Wait, did John uh, Hughes make that movie? Of course, yeah. Of yeah, course, I, I, I love John Absolutely. Hughes. Oh, yeah. he's the man. Fuck yeah. Yeah, I didn't know he wrote I, Dumb and Dumber. Ha! I didn't either. Hughes did? I thought so. I think he's one of the writers on Dumb and Dumber. Didn't the Fairly Brothers? Don't they write and direct all their movies? I don't know. I heard something that he was had something to do with it. Uh, oh, interesting. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Huh. I mean, yeah, I don't have that bit of. Crazier uh, things have happened. I don't have that big. Bit it's of funny. I mean, I don't really have much else to say. About I know it's, it's tough. It's like I want to be able to like go on and on, but the the blunt truth is, I'm just gonna have the same complaints. Yeah. Well, there's it not was, a lot I know they had Brendel Hux. Uh, they showed in season seven, or I mean episode seven, Brendel Hux, uh, General Hux, the guy that when when uh, he was using the droid to talk to Moth Gideon, and then Moth talks to all the, the Council of Empire yeah. people. So that one guy that was talking, Hux is the guy from the sequels. He, he was in the, that he scene? Was, no, he, that's his dad. Oh. Okay. Uh, the guy who ends up being the spy for the rebellion. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. So, so that's, that was, that's his dad. They're connecting what? there. Yeah, so they're, and they're it's like they're trying to connect the sequels. They're trying to, and like but they're just doing a sh like, It's like the sequel. Yes. You're trying on ground there where it's like, if you're trying to make this sequel's situation better, you're not doing very... You're just going to make, it, to, make yeah. it worse. It's hard to understate the degree of disappointment because it it's multifaceted, right? It's not just yeah. that, oh, bummer, we lost a season of Mando that could have been cool. It It's like this yeah. big harbinger of doom for what's go to come with the Star Wars yeah, franchise. Exactly yeah, it, it seems like the Titanic is heading towards a fucking iceberg. Yeah. yeah. Versus That's like exactly there right. was season two of Mandalorian and then there was um, Andor and I was like holy shit these guys Here are actually go. fucking pulling this it's off feeling really there was a moment remember, where was, I was feeling sky high remember how stoked we were during Andor it was yeah. like you oh felt amazing watching it I was like genuinely <laughs> thrilled and excited each week to watch an episode and we come on here and talk about it and yeah. go on about it. you know it's like for anyone that's coming new to this show we don't always complain yeah. it's, if you go back and listen to where we cover Andor. We were stoked across the board. Yeah, it's there was the there wasn't really to be excited. Dig, yeah, we yeah. didn't dig Book of Boba Fett, which this is maybe worse. And we uh, and we didn't maybe. dig um, Obi Wan really, but we started off liking Obi Wan just for well, the fucking funny. record. I was hoping. Remember, like the last episode of Obi Wan, where it had some. Re it, it didn't bring the whole series together, but it had that redeeming moment of like that moments, lightsaber yeah. battle was cool. Yeah, right. And the whole yeah. like you know cutting the helmet off. So there was like right. I was kind of hoping for a sense of some like it's not nothing nothing was gonna save the season, but yeah. something maybe something no, it to was get unsavable. pumped about. And but, nothing. Yeah. But to your point that you've made before, CG, the reason that that last duel with Vader and Obi Wan, despite that overall series being kind of a dud, and that those moments felt good is because of the point you made about what they're building off of. Unlike Marvel that's just carding from scratch, they had the luxury of we're invested and developed in Obi-Wan and Vader from the original trilogy. So yeah. so those moments can't like it's almost like a cheat. They didn't have to do any it's of the legwork yeah, to make to develop point. that because we yeah. already invested in Vader, Vader and Obi-Wan since 19 fucking 77. So yeah, the watching gravity. them throw down does just come with a little bit more weight because we've been invested in these characters for fucking decades. Whereas in The Mandalorian, Bo-Katan, Moff Gideon, all the shit is things they've thrown together in literally two or three episodes, and each episode is maybe 40 minutes, and that's not covering just those characters. So in terms of screen time, the Bo-Katan, Moff Gideon, Dark Saber thing is probably a accumulation of maybe 30 minutes, 40 that's minutes true. of screen time of just those characters developing their plot lines. And that is such a shitty... Like, nothing will carry weight if you can't find a way to no. make it... Well, what's lame is longer. you have to watch the cartoons to be into this. Yeah. Well, that's, well, that's the thing that's doing. starting to. We've been, yeah, that's what we've been talking about. Is like, well, they'll say, well, you can still enjoy this if you're not following mm, it, but clearly know. you can't not because anymore. if you don't, it's not going to have any weight. If you, I have a feeling if you haven't watched Rebels, going into Ahsoka is going to be a nightmare. See that? I well, we'll yeah. find out because I'll tell you right now, I ain't watching Rebels. Yeah. And I'm going to see what's going on with Ahsoka. So, I. 
if I'm lost, you guys will have to be my support group and fill in the blanks on what that's is so the reason. Dumb. Because no. it's well, super. Like, I know what the next show is. Like like the soak is uh, next August. August. Yeah. Okay. Comes cool. in August. And well, then I, I mean, figure out something to do between now and then. Like, oh, well, Ready Return of the Jedi is actually about to hit yeah. theaters. Oh so. yeah, Curtis. Uh, oh we gotta, yeah, we're going to see that. Yeah, we got to do that. Yeah, why not? I, I mean, I mean, definitely. It's you don't get to see it on the big screen that often. I'm sure yeah. it's going to be the version where Sice Noodles is CG and. Um, Dude, you can see. Uh, uh, I didn't even think about the that. Gonna, uh, there's going to be a beak. There's going to be a beak on the um on the Sarlacc, the Sarlacc pit. On the Sarlacc yeah. pit. And then uh, and then. Hayden Christensen's <laughs> Anakin Skywalker at the end. Oh, that that really oh, pissed me off. That's, that's awesome. Awesome. that was that was in, that was an insult to injury moment when they did that. I was like, what are you thinking? What? Why they, he actively... was totally trolling. Yeah, <sighs> he was. It definitely felt like it, some trolling oh, was going on in that moment. Yeah, maybe he was. Fuck. Oh yeah, yeah, he was. He definitely was. Fuck him. But <laughs> um, I th I think it's worth noting that we're gonna do an episode. Maybe give us ourselves a week or two, get resettled, recover. Like nurse our wounds from Mando yeah. and do like a new. There's been a lot of news since Star Wars Celebration and what's coming and what's not. So we're gonna, gonna like that. sit down, do some research, make a list, and then we'll just kind of do an episode in the next couple of weeks where we just go through all the latest so news much. and what's coming. Hope again. Yeah, we might have a guest or, or something just for the fun. Yeah, of we'll it. try to get some folks in the mix on that. I mean, it's gonna be bittersweet because I think again this season makes it harder to feel excited about all these things that are getting it announced. Is. Like we're approaching all this with trepidation and concern as opposed to this is just going to be exciting. It's like this should yeah. be an exciting time to be a Star Wars fan and it's literally the opposite. I'm sitting here over oh, already thinking to myself how bad can it get and what's the threshold where I won't watch anymore? Yeah. I mean I'll, like, I'll be straight up another Mandalorian season like this and it's not like I'm taking a stance. I just won't be interested. I just yeah, won't who cares? feel in a, dr a drive to watch it anymore. Yeah, it sucks because I feel like we, if if this season was good, I'd be genuinely stoked for all this new Star Wars stuff. And now it's like, really, you're gonna add more? Dude, this Apparently season didn't McGregor, even have to be good. It just it could have been mediocre. Just anything, just anything, but it what 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 it was. Apparently, Ewan McGregor's dying to do another season of Kenobi, and it's like just and he's stop. dying to cash another fucking check that takes yeah out. yeah God exactly seventy five percent of the fucking his art wife, department's budget. His wife yeah, is in uh, Ahsoka. Yeah, he's got his lady all up in the Star Wars world too now, so they're just gonna. His daughter was it. in Obi. -Wan. Yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. But please, please just, do another it's one. It's just Marvel. It's just Marvel yeah. two point That's just what it Which is. Which is now. sad. It's not the same. Yeah. I hate Marvel. It's really, I, it, I hate that. Yeah, it's definitely oh, not wait, for we, me, man. I do we wish have any transitions, Paul. Uh, tra yeah, I was gonna say we've we got we, we've got one transmission. Why don't we go ahead and run that, Curtis? Uh, yeah, let me punch that shit. Blast out of here. Let's. Okay. Oh, what the? Oh, I guess I left my transmitter on. Hey, what's up, scoundrels? It's Mark reporting back from Villa Park, Illinois here. So yeah, our beloved Mandalorian, the savior, the pre-Andor series, savior of Star Wars. I stand kind of where you stand and uh, a mixed bag, man. Like anything Star Wars anymore these days, it's just a, a debatable, questionable mixed bag. Not a huge fan, man. I I'm kind of like... I'm over it a little bit. Last episode was pretty goddamn good, though. It, it gave me just enough to pull me back in. All in all, mostly bad. Some real weird, just bunk shit in there, in my opinion. Not a huge fan of trying to tie everything into everything else. And clearly, they're trying to just bring everything in, marvelize it, and, and really taking that prequel vibe into this thing. Something this that spans this many generations is obviously going to have its sort of factions and viewpoints and whatever you know as is the case with 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 all of these franchises and everything it, it's one of those things where it's like too many cooks in the kitchen it's ultimately gonna be just a muddled mess going forward i don't know i don't know man i don't know you know i don't know i'll, I'll watch it <laughs> whatever it's star wars man whatever anyways thanks for all you do dudes i love it keep it rolling and uh we'll check you later now let me go back to what i was doing here I'm off tomorrow from work, so I waited up late to watch the season finale for The Mandalorian. I'm recording my reaction 
after taking a poll with my brother and sister because <laughs> from the last season finale and when Luke Skywalker came, I was here at home. I was a, I was a bawling mess, grown ass man, just bawling like a lot of middle aged guys and guys who grew up with Star Wars. Good job, buddy. Droids R5 should not be flying. Droids do not fly. That's CGI bullshit that we saw in the prequels. Sorry. I don't get walking around holding your helmet. You're Mandalorian. You should. It's just for the actors to be able to show their face on screen. It makes it looks stupid walking around holding a helmet. So is the armorer not a spy or not a bad guy? There's Baby Yoda acting like Yoda from Attack of the Clones. I am Groot. Just like the I am Groot moment in Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, it shows how powerful Grogu is. Grogu is going to be the future Yoda for the future movies. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. Very Catholic. <laughs> Baptism. Well, not as emotional with the uh, original trilogy surprises as that Luke Skywalker ending. My siblings are laughing. They think I should have recorded it. So that's why I was recording because I thought maybe there would be some big surprise. But there wasn't really a big surprise. I kept thinking maybe what if they bring something from the original trilogy like a Han Solo or something. But it was a lot of action. It was okay. Eventually, all the Mandalorians, won't they have to die? Um, this season, to be honest, for me, was underwhelming. I didn't like all the, um, I don't know, all the prequel stuff, all the Filoni stuff. That's the, I'm not a fan of that. Season 1 was my favorite. Season 2 was better. And this is my least favorite. The majority of the uh, uh, season, it felt like Mandalorian and Grogu were... There was no urgency in their story anymore. It was like they were side players to Bo-Katan's story. And this is all the Clone Wars and Rebels and, and characters are coming in. Dave Filoni's in charge now, and the majority of fans like it. You know, they're gonna be all gaga and act over the Ashoka thing. I'm gonna tune out of the Ashoka. I don't even know if I'm gonna watch it. I'm not a fan of Ashoka. I don't need to watch cartoons to know her story and all this stuff. It's to me that's not Star Wars. When I see Ashoka, when I see anything from Rebels or Clone Wars, that's not Star Wars to me. It's like Star Wars adjacent. I know I, I say that. I don't like where the Star Wars fandom is right now. So me personally, I I I only like nuggets of the original trilogy, things that remind me of the original trilogy. Some of the scenes in this episode remind me of the original Star Wars, like him talking to the droid r5 i don't like how r5 flies you, these r2d2 these r2 droids astromech droids do not fly okay i'm sorry that was from the stupid prequels and that was the the biggest stupidest thing in the world with r2d2 flying you have a whole original trilogy with r2d2 and he doesn't fly in any of those episodes but in these new cgi ones he's flying around he's got little jet rock they should just stick with old school just do everything analog. What Go with what works. I think a successful Star Wars movie would be to be retro. It would be great if a filmmaker just went and said, you know what, I'm going to use, I'll use um, CGI very, very minimalist like Christopher Nolan to erase that stuff. But other than that, let's make a movie with the same tech that they made the original Star Wars and Empire Strikes Back. Use digital where it doesn't even look like digital. Go Tarantino on it. Don't do CGI, no digital. Film it on film, 35 millimeter film, IMAX film. Get Christopher Nolan's people to work on it. Um, and I guarantee you, and shoot in real locations. Not I know that stuff that they use for the uh, Mandalorian, it looks real. But to me, go out in the desert. Go out in the, uh, you know, to real locations. And no Coruscant. Star Wars is not... And I repeat this, Star Wars is not Blade Runner. When I really like something that's something that works is I want to watch it again. You know, my favorite movies, I have a bad habit where I'll watch like There Will Be Blood over and over again. This, this is something I would, or Star Wars, I've watched Star Wars a hundred times 
or John Wick or something. This is, a, I won't watch this again. And uh, that's sad. Well, um, season three was kind of a letdown. Uh, Andor was a lot more adult and serious and great and more grittier. And that's what Star Wars should be with a little bit of fun. I hope the scoundrels can continue the podcast. I'm um, like, thank you for watching my transmission. And um, I hope all you fellow scoundrels um, uh, just keep loving Star Wars. All right. It's always good to hear Ooh. from some fellow scoundrels out there. Oh, yeah. Don't you be are shy. A scoundrel. We, you can send us transmissions even when there's not an episode going. We can put it in an interface and we can do transmissions all the time. And like we said, we're going to do a news episode where we round up all the latest announcements in the last couple months. So maybe this is a good opportunity. We'll keep you guys posted on when we tape and we'll give you a little more advanced notice and you can send in transmissions and whatnot. And if we can, maybe we'll even get a couple uh, scoundrels live in with Ooh, us. I love here. that. Hell yeah. That'd get be the, great. Get the, get the group conversation a little bigger next time. Let's get it in. See yeah. If can, uh, see if it's going to be more of the, uh, you know, the 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 shit show perspective, or maybe we can get some folks in here that can tell yeah. us that we're wrong and that the shit is great. Yeah. I mean, they'll be wrong, but I'd like to hear them make their case. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll yeah. treat you with respect. Mostly. Well, I feel yeah, it feels Mostly. like a bummer episode. It's like I'm trying to muster up. I know. The I don't want to like end kinda... end it on a. Yeah. Uh, no, it wasn't I bad, mean, but everything, but it wasn't good. But everything good, leading up to moments. it was pretty fucking shitty. But just just left feeling. The season what? for me was terrible. Yeah, yeah I yeah. give this bad. less than a five. Like probably like a five. And the only reason they got five is that was some cool. Like there's some cool action sequences. The uh, reason but, I think it's so terrible is because it's a big step back for the franchise. Yeah, and like yeah. I said before, it now leaves you concerned about. It's not just that we had a bummer Mando. It's now a, I don't know about all this shit, and it yeah. feels real bad. That it's about as bad as they could do, where they didn't just mess up a season, but now they've compromised your confidence in having fun with Star Wars. And going this is forward. supposed. This is supposed yeah. to be your number one, the Mandalorian. Like, this this is like like watching the '90s Bulls uh, just like blow a championship. It's like how did you? But, How'd you blow it? How'd you blow? You had you fucking Scotty Pippen, Michael Pippen, Jordan, Tony Jordan? Kukoc, like, Steve get out Kerr, of here. Kukoc. you had Horace Grant. Like, <laughs> make it happen, y'all. Fucking Bill Winnington, up blow in it. the mix. But, you lost to the dudes. Utah Jazz. Luke Longley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Luke Longley's in the mix anyway. Dude. Where do you go all day long with this? You can get Dennis Rodman in there. Throw him in there. Oh, oh yeah. Shout out to Rodman. Well, maybe we can oh, get yeah. Rodman in the Star Wars universe. Get Rodman in here to save this fucking shit. He might. Well, y'all, what do you think? Should we get the fuck out of here? I, I guess I'm, we're gonna get I'm out of here. I hope, hope it didn't bum anybody out. This season was a, <laughs> was a shit show. Sorry, y'all. It's uh, we'll come back with another episode in a couple of weeks. We'll cover the latest and greatest, where we won't just bitch about this season. Where hopefully we can muster some, some yeah. causes for optimism and excitement. I'll get pumped. For what it, I, I feel like, I want to end by reminding people we lo we do love Star Wars. We want oh, yeah. to love this shit. We we want to be. We are not predisposed to negativity. I want to be a kid oh, yeah. sitting at story time like I feel when I watch the other ones. Like that is what I go to it for. I'm trying. I don't have a chip on my shoulder. I mean, dude, we started a fucking yep. Star Wars podcast. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't it wasn't because we hated this shit. You know? Yeah, it wasn't to be one of those dudes that were like on there constantly bitching and trying to get clicks yeah. because we're bitching. That's right. Um, we we wanted to have fun. And, yeah. Yeah. I mean, anyway, it's good. well, it's good. season one of a Mandalorian so much, you're like, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Well, All like, right, comment, subscribe, tell your friends, uh, three grown-ass men who might be a little grouchy. Three little more grouch. three grouchy grown-ass men. Well, we're going to work on turning these frowns upside down, but at the moment, <laughs> it's not feeling sunny in there. Um, yeah. Curtis? Yeah, let's blow it? this chip stand.